Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and this is episode 3 on the wheel alignment. In episode number 2 we have looked at the spring rate, the riding height and some other elements. But now it's time to look at the weight and the cross weight balance because that is very important. In terms of weight the ultimate goal is to have a perfectly balanced race car. So if this was our race car, we could draw a line from the back to the front, which is the red line. And ideally, you would like to have 50% of the load or the weight to the left and 50% to the right. We could also draw the black line through the center of the car and we would like to have 50% towards the back of the car of the weight and 50% to the front. If we have that condition, then we have a perfect, symmetric and balanced car and it will behave exactly the same no matter if you take a left or a right turn. Although designers are trying to reach the 50-50% target while they are building the cars, in reality it is extremely difficult. Now the race car that I have here doesn't meet that because there are components that are on the left hand side and not on the right hand side. There are components that are in the back like the engine and no engine in the front. So automatically you will have an offset of that load. And just by looking on this car you can see that the differential is sitting on the left hand side, the exhaust is sitting on the right hand side, we've got the radiator on the right and we have a battery on the left. So basically we have different components spread throughout the car and that's going to have an effect on how the weight on the car is distributed. So this is my car and as you can see the curb of the car is actually sitting on the springs. So four springs. Springs are critical in any car design. So these springs are carrying the complete curb weight. So if you're turning to the left then you'll see that the springs will be compressed on the outer side. If you're turning to the right, the springs will compress on the other side. If you brake, then the, spring, uh, the springs to the front will be compressed. And if you accelerate, most likely uh, you're going to compress the strings uh, in the back. Now, this is how the springs behave. That's the dynamically behavior. And we are shifting loads basically under the forces. However, the curb weight itself, there is nothing we can do if the engine is in the back then we may not meet the 50-50% weight distribution. If we have a heavy part on the left hand side, maybe a huge radiator and nothing on the right, then again the 50-50% uh, weight is not going to be um, met. In other words, you can't change the weight balance on a car unless you're going to move physically components. You, you might want to move a battery from the left to the right, a radiator from the front to the back. You can do those things, but these are building elements that you have to move around in the car to adjust the weight balance. Some people don't move these things around, but they're just adding a weight somewhere. So you can add weights to your car, but of course, if you're adding weight to your car, you're going to pay on performance. We know on an unbalanced car that the weight uh, on the four wheels is uneven. It's not the same. In other words, the grip on the tarmac is different. And that could result in a different behavior if you turn right or you turn left. And this is something you really don't want to happen. Luckily for us, we have a solution for this, which is setting the tension on the coils. And therefore you need adjustable shock absorbers. So if you don't have adjustable shock absorbers, then don't bother because then you cannot do this. But on this race car, we can adjust the spring. Now the shorter the spring becomes, the more force you're putting down on the tarmac. The longer the spring becomes, the less force you're putting down. And that's the kind of balance we will have to work out. And we can balance this out across the wheels. So the front left to the right rear and the opposite. So always in a cross factor, never straight or vertical or horizontal. That doesn't work. You cannot transfer weight between the front wheels or between the rear wheels or from left to right hand side. You can only do it cross car. This is what you can do, nothing else. So keep that in mind. What I have here is kind of a representation of our car. We have the front right, the front left, the rear left and the rear right wheel. And what these white and green tabs are, are actually the spring loads. So the amount of the springs and pushing down the wheel into the tarmac. The three white ones are of equal force, 
but the green spring is having a bit more force. And as a result, you will see that this table now becomes very unstable. And this is exactly the effect you get on your car. So you're going to get an unstable car when turning. So the only way to solve this is by adjusting the spring here. Now we can relax the spring by giving it more distance, making it longer. And at the same time, in the opposite direction, we would actually tighten up that spring on that side. If you slacken off and tighten the springs uh, on both sides, then you will maintain your riding height. If you only adjust it on one side, then you're going to lose your riding height and you will have to reset it. Now, the whole idea is that we're going to cross balance uh, between corners, as you can see here. So front right to uh, rear left and the opposite front left to rear right. And so this is how we're going to do that measurement. And that is a lot of trial and error. To corner balance the car, you have to make sure that the car is sitting absolutely on the level floor. In my case, my floor is not level, so I'm using these pads and you've seen that before. The second thing you're going to need are scales. And here is one scale and you need a scale on every corner. Now you can probably rent those scales or you can buy them. I bought those some time ago and they run you about 1,000, 1,200 euros. Fairly good quality, I cannot complain. But without that, you, it's going to be very hard to do. I've seen people using um, bathroom scales and in fact sometimes two scales together with a plank on it a piece of wood, so because the total weight is not enough on a single scale, so you can do that, all that. But I like those scales, they are wireless, and, and, and I can sit in the car because if you're going to do all this work and take all the measurements, you really should sit in the car, have it all fueled up, have the right tire pressure, and all that. And one more important thing, you have to disconnect the sway bar because you don't want to have that effect because it could be under tension and it's going to give you a false reading. So keep that in mind. So the next thing we're going to do now is uh, to roll the car onto the scales and then we will start to do some basic measurements and see what we have. First of all, let's turn on the scales. And that's the only drawback on these scales. I have to do it from below. As you can see, the total weight of the car, with me inclusive, is 469 kilograms. And um, in pounds, that would be 1,037 pounds. But what is more interesting is to see that we have in the front 90 kilograms on the left, 101 kilograms on the right. So this is 19.2 to 21.5% difference between the um, two front wheels. In the back, the left rear wheel is 31% of the load and the right rear wheel is 28.2%. That is most likely because of the differential sitting on one side. As the car is loaded up with fuel, the tire pressure is set correctly, so everything is as it should be. So now let's have a look what our uh, front to back ratio is. So the front is uh, 40 0.7% of all the load and the rear is basically 59.3%. So we got like a 40 to 60% ratio front to back, which is not too bad. So now let's see if we do the next one. So left to right, so running from the left side of the car, running to the right side of the car. The left side is 50% and the right side is 94.8%. So I think overall that balance is not too bad, uh, left to right and front to back. I'm quite pleased with that. Now comes the most important part, which is the cross balance. So let's see. From left front to rear right, and we're sitting at 47.4%, which is of course not all that good. And what we can see is that the the front left, which is this one right here, is uh, 198 and we have 20, 293 kilograms in the back. So this is a little bit low. So in other words, the other cross is causing more load and most likely it's going to be the one here in the back. So let's move to that one. Uh, right front to the left rear. So this is like 52.7%. 
and you can see we got 101 kilograms on the right front and 146 on the right rear. So what I can say from this is that my back tire on the left uh, in the back is pushing a bit too hard. So I'm going to soften up that spring and I'm going to harden a little bit the front spring. And we have to do this a couple of times because this is a balancing job. Uh, for that one, we'll have to adjust the shock absorbers uh, on the rings and we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to get out of the car and then I need to get back in and out. So this is a, a process of getting in and out quite a couple of times. So I'm going to write this down on the board so we can actually see it. So based on the measurements we've done, we've got a front to back ratio of 40 to 60 percent while I was in the car. So I think this is all right and acceptable. It would have been nice 50-50, but 40-60 is quite all right, especially the engine is in the back and the front is fairly light. So um, that is good. So this may be maybe a little bit of an issue for understeer, maybe, I don't know, uh, we'll see. Um, but I think we're never gonna have oversteer with this because we have more pressure in the back. Uh, from left to right on the car, uh, we've got almost like a 50-50%. There were a few hundred grams difference, but to me that's 50-50, so that is good. Now the left front uh, to the rear right um, cross measurement was 47.8%. And the right front to the left rear was 52.2%. So that diagonal here is having the heavier weight. And if I check on the weights on the individual tires, you can actually see that this is the heavy one. This is the one where the spring is really uh, pushing down hard compared to the others. So what I'm going to do here now in the first instance is slacken off this spring. So in other words, if this is the spring now, I'm going to make the spring a little bit longer so I'm going to adjust the ring at the coilover so the spring is a bit longer. And on this side, I'm going to make the spring a little bit shorter. So that way. So I think this will already make a change and then we're going to measure it again and see what happens. Hopefully that brings down this percentage. The reason that I'm doing both is what I explained before. If you um, lengthen this spring and you shorten that one then you're keeping your riding height otherwise you're losing your riding height if you only do it on one side and adjusting the shocks is done with uh, some keys like this so this is nothing really special i just need to turn them and then i'll show you uh, what the result is sometimes you might need to jack up the car to take the pressure off um, all right, let's see. And once you've done that, you want to move the car back and forth a bit, so making sure that everything settles right. Well, it's still 52.2, so I'm going to give it a bit more. So right now I'm loosening up the spring here. So right now I'm sitting at uh, 49%, so I'm going to give it a little bit more. And it's a lot of fiddling. All right, let's see. This is 49.5. We almost made it. Well, I got 50%, 0.1. So, but these figures were without me in the car, so now I will get in the car and see what happens. And hopefully we should have the same result. So this is my cross load now from right front to left rear. I'm having 50.1%, which is good. Look at my front weight, 79, 79 kilograms. So that really balanced out nicely. And in the back, I almost have an equal weight on both sides. There's only about half a kilogram, a kilogram difference. So I'm pretty pleased with that. So let's see what we have in the other direction. 
So from the left front to the right rear, we got 49.9. So this is good. Uh, so overall, this looks quite all right. So all by all, guys, this is really a good result. And now you have seen on how you can actually weight balance your car. Uh, this car should now perform properly. Of course, I will still have to check the riding height because that might have changed. Although I did balance the springs out. I, when I tighten one, I release the opposite one. Uh, but then again, um, we need to check it. And if the riding height is not right, I will have to readjust the studs, the pull rods, to adjust the running height and then do the scale test again. So it's a process that you need to go back and forth until you got it right. Now, I know we haven't aligned the wheels in terms of toe and caster and camber. That is coming, I promise you that. And then at the end, the very end, we go into redo all this weight testing again, just to make sure everything is right. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.